Welcome back, my friends. And today we've got another great video from Endymion. So swing over to his channel. I'll have the link down below and uh, subscribe and show him some support and some love and and all that jazz. And uh, so today, uh, about half the, well, not half the video, but maybe 10 minutes or so, so uh, of the video is gonna be uh, basically people hating <laughs> on Endymion and dumping all over him for what he has to say and for conveying the sources and all that. But then we're going to be getting into some more juicy, juicy Ubisoft uh, information. Some just crazy stuff that's going on internally and what may be happening with the company. It might be getting sold. I don't know. But let's uh, let's jump to it. All right. Let's do it. Hey everyone, it's Endymion, and with my last few videos on this subject, the industry has been a little bit on fire to say the least. I've been getting a lot of heat for my videos from all over, and to say these last few days have been crazy on the internet for me, that's a massive understatement. I have been given some more info on Ubisoft internally by a very mad employee, so we'll go over that in this video. We'll also talk about some other rumors that other sources are stating publicly as well, Beyond this, we'll also talk about how Ubisoft might be getting sold to a certain company if things don't improve as well as much more. And I kind of also want to address these allegations against me, so y'all mind if I just start with that real quick? So like I said, I've been getting a lot of heat lately, which is totally fine, it comes with the job. When you do YouTube, especially in the space that I'm in, you're going to get harassed almost constantly, and you need thick skin to do these sorts of things. I've been told that I'm lying and that I am just making up my claims, which is interesting because many of the things that I have been told have been confirmed by other journalists too, like at Insider Gaming. For example, I said that Yasuke's role would be reduced and they would also change it and they would be fixing the architecture of the game to actually be more authentic. And then Insider Games' Tom Henderson confirmed the same thing a day or two after I released my video on that same information. I also found it funny that people said that I made up the Yasuke being a race narrative, which proves that many people on the internet, they have selective hearing and really bad reading comprehension to boot. <laughs> well, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I don't know about that comprehension part, but uh, yeah, definitely when people are stuck, to, stuck in their like little uh, uh, bubbles, right? their information bubbles, uh, it's hard for them to break out of that, even when they're confronted with uh, the absolute truth. So, I'm with you, brother. I am not the source for that narrative, by the way. As I stated in that first video that I did on all of this, the Yasuke being a race narrative, that came from Paul Tassi of Forbes, who said that in his own article that he published himself. So yet again, proving that a lot of my detractors seem to lack basic understanding of how to understand words or phrases. <laughs> again, this was first said by Paul Tassi. Sure, I may have been the first YouTuber person to catch wind of his article and report on it, but I'm not the source of that narrative. I don't wager that'll change many minds since it goes against their narrative in disqualifying my claims. But let it be known that these people are being disingenuous and morons on purpose, which is hell of a combo, but you do you, I guess. I also thought it was rich to see someone like Andy Cortez of Kinda of Funny coming out and attacking me, calling me a loser on my post about Ubisoft's inner workings. But that isn't surprising coming from someone like Andy, who is but a peon of Greg Miller over there at Kinda of Funny. Just remember that Kinda of Funny, they haven't been relevant for a really long time, they even turned their main channel into a highlights channel because their views were abysmal. Kind of Funny is the exact kind of gaming channel news talking heads group that I implore more people to never get their information or takes from. You want to talk about industry heads that offer nothing but the same talking point amongst themselves? That's Kind of Funny to a T. They were only relevant when Colin Moriarty was there who left because Greg Miller, if you remember, threw Colin under the bus the moment he did something slightly controversial. And by controversial, I mean that he made a joke about women on International Women's Day, and then Greg and the rest of them, they threw him to the wolves. That's pretty horrible. Now, to, for complete transparency, I have no idea who these people are <laughs> that he's talking about. Uh, so I'm just going to have to take uh, with, uh, you know, not a grain, 
but uh that he knows what he's talking about here but that's pretty that's pretty horrible to to throw somebody under the bus just cuz they say something on women's day <laughs> that's so ridiculous Thankfully, Colin is doing way better than they are and is actually still relevant because remember that the $400 million Concord story? That came from <laughs> Colin in Last Stand. When it comes to Greg Miller or his Yes Men, what have they done in comparison? Oh, that's right. Nothing. Except Greg saying that he loves Starfield's Shattered Space Expansion, which has also been universally panned and scored lower on Metacritic than Concord did. But that's the oh, kind wow. of people kind of funny is. So Andy Cortez attacking me, that's really no surprise. These dudes are just not relevant. Their videos do abysmally considering their size. Andy isn't even in most of kind of funny's most popular videos, which I should remind him of. But I really do hope that Andy stays a kind of funny because Greg Miller is definitely going to need a clown to dance for his kids at their birthday parties, which I'm sure Andy is a master at doing these days already. Just remember, fellas, that Kinda of Funny is a place that throws their best talent to the woke wolves when they come howling. They all Man, that is savage. <laughs> Jeez. Also have a guy named Tim Geddes that made it his online persona about how he would want to sleep with all of the Disney princesses. Most of whom, by the way, are barely legal, if even that, which is <laughs> creepy that a middle-aged dude is comfortable saying that on the internet, but... Good for you, Tim, I guess. Uh, keep being a weirdo. But yeah, I just wanted to say that anyone saying I was lying, and yet the things I'm saying as time goes on prove to be true, keep seething. Thank you. Kind of Funny is the worst kind of gaming news coverage that you can find on the internet right now. It's... Man, he really doesn't... He really doesn't like these guys, <laughs> does he? <laughs> Jeez. Just a dump that is full of pearl-clutching industry yes-men who will never say anything that goes against the agenda or the grain or anything like that because they don't want to lose their free access to games and such. And this is why people like this and more are so vehemently against YouTubers these days, not just me by the way, but a lot of us, Yellow Flash, Hypnotic, Valiant Renegade, the list goes on. They hate everyone who does similar content. Hmm. I would lump Kinda Funny into the same group as the gaming journalists that hate us as well, since they obviously originated from that same group of dwindling talent. These game journalists, man, they just hate us. They want us to comply to their every whim. They want their word to be gospel, but they ruin their own reputation. That's why we exist. We wouldn't exist if you guys weren't idiots, but what's done is done. And because that we're not like them, they hate us for it. Go look at IGN attacking Black Myth and Kong, or The Verge calling Gamergate too smaller and sadder than before, Yet it's the exact opposite and has been changing the industry. These people hate us, fellas. It's all projection. Anyway, let's move on because I got some more stuff for you. First, in terms of Ubisoft, I had a really angry employee reach out to me that ranted a bunch of stuff which was really entertaining to read. They were telling me that the inside of Ubisoft right now is hell and there's a lot of disorganized chaos going on behind the scenes. I was also given screenshots of internal groups they have at Ubisoft which are ridiculous but they're sadly real. I will share these screenshots on Twitter once this video goes live by the way so people can have copies of it. I was also told to black out the names of employees on these documents as for sharing the unedited versions of these screenshots I guess we'll see I don't know I might share those but for this video they will be blacked out because I think that's a good, safer way of doing this, especially on YouTube. And before anyone Probably claims I'm somehow lying or made up these screenshots I'm about to show, consider the fact that I would have to somehow first break into Ubisoft's internal servers, mask myself as an Ubisoft employee, which requires verification that I obviously do not have because I do not work at Ubisoft. And the likelihood that I could somehow perfectly replicate entire group design documents that look exactly like Ubisoft's does from their employees would actually be very impressive. I wish I could be that good at Photoshop, but alas, I'm not. So before anyone claims these are not real or something, please look at these first, and again, I'll be sharing them via Twitter unless Ubisoft DMCA's me or something, I guess. Anyway, so it turns out Ubisoft has these employee-led groups within their company that other employees can access via their internal websites behind a Corpo VPN. For example, here we have an internal group specified to bring together all women and non-binary devs at Ubisoft oh so they can boy. mingle amongst themselves, I guess, oh boy. and create their own little <laughs> echo chamber within the company. 
Some of these yes. other groups are wild. There's another one that's specified again for the women and non-binary devs, and it even says in their description, This group welcomes everyone who identifies as a woman or non-binary interested in a safe sharing space and or wants to change Ubisoft Paris Studios culture. But everybody else, F off. <laughs> Jeez. So inclusive. I should probably also note that some of this was Google translated from French to English, so if it looks a bit off, now you know. Because the person I was talking to, they were a fluent French speaker, but they could also thankfully speak English pretty well too. As you can see, these groups exist within Ubisoft, and they are designed, as I stated, to change the company culture from the inside out based on the demands of these groups. I really don't know why you would ever consider doing this to be a good idea for your company, because what you're essentially doing is creating smaller echo chambers within your company that, like I showed you, have demands for the company to enforce in the future. So what would happen if you didn't enforce these rules? Could these groups technically sue you for not listening to their demands? Yeah, I mean, any echo chamber is, they're all bad. Regardless of what group is associated to or whatever, it's bad. You want to be able to have open communication regardless if you think something sucks or if you think something's great, uh, regardless of how much it is going against the grain of the, the culture of the, the company, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I, I really do hope we're on the downturn of this DEI stuff, but apparently it's still going strong at the, at the moment. Ubisoft has, according to the source that shared this information with me, they are reeling in problems for years at this point. This employee told me that they're only working at Ubisoft in order to pay their bills and then they will leave the moment that they can. They have also told me that Ubisoft has been hiring diversity hires for roles as big as project managers. Oh gosh, yeah, see, no, that's just a recipe for disaster, for a DEI disaster, disaster. <laughs> no, that's just not good. You need competent people for a pro for a project manager for sure. And I don't care if you're a man, woman, black, white, yellow, purple, whatever. It does not matter. You need you need competency in that type of position for things to run smoothly. I'm told that some of these project managers can barely speak English very well, and they also don't speak French either at all. Or well, that would be a little problematic. I mean, especially the English, but Ubisoft's a French-based company, I believe, right? So if you didn't speak French, that would definitely be problematic. But I, I, I would think that the French people, uh, they would be able to speak enough English that um, you could get by. But if you don't even speak English or French, why? how in the world did you get that position? Or even at a basic level, which, why would Ubisoft hire such people as project managers Hello? if they can't even properly communicate with the teams under them? It's DEI, of course, it always right. is, but if these people are located in places like Montreal, the, the language is pretty much like French, and these project managers don't speak it? Oh my god, let's just keep going. I guess they want to get someone who ticks boxes in these positions to make it seem better than it actually is. There's also specific group initiatives at Ubisoft, for example, to uplift and enforce black voices within the company. This group is called of Bo, there is. or Black Employees at Ubisoft. Bo. Their mission statement, which reads in the internal group document that I was sent, their mission statement, which reads in the internal group document I was sent, the mission of Black Employees at Ubisoft, or Bo, is to foster community, improve cultural awareness and competency and champion the advancement of black employees at Ubisoft to create a more diverse and inclusive workplace. And again, anybody else? F off. I mean, that's like total racism right there. Like, that's just like blatant racism. I, I mean, seriously, if somebody tried to start a group inside of Ubisoft that was, I don't know, uh, uh, white employees at Ubisoft, <laughs> you know, like, uh, it wouldn't fly. It wouldn't fly at all. Like, uh, no. So it's, it's total hypocrisy. Let's fight racism with, with racism. <laughs> like what? That, that doesn't make any sense. 
So it's a group that welcomes only black devs to their group, creating yet another echo chamber amidst all the other ones. But this one specifically wants to push for black devs to get senior roles because they're black, I guess. This does seem to be a huge problem according to my source that shared this with me because it's creating chaos as in who gets promoted for whichever yeah. role. And as you can probably imagine, if an opening for a project manager happens, you'll have each of these virtue signaling groups sending their people for the new job role. Then you, as the person I guess who decides who gets the role, has to now decide which applicant amongst those that were sent by these echo chamber groups gets the position. Yeah, and that's a total nightmare. Because if you actually pick the qualified person and they don't happen to be inside of one of these many groups, well, well then their alarms are going to go off and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you're a racist or you're a bigot or whatever, you're a homophobe or whatever term they want to use. And then who knows, that could go to HR and then lawsuits. And it's like being held hostage in some ways, depending on how aggressive these people want to get with, uh, you know, pushing their agenda. And then I can only imagine if this happens that if you don't give a role to a certain group, you might get canceled and labeled as racist for choosing another group. Right. I think we can all see how poorly this can all go. It's a Molotov cocktail of really <laughs> bad decisions. <laughs> and it proves how pandering can it. only make you more problems in the future. Yeah. There's also groups like the French Queer Bureau, which says it exists to bring everyone who falls under that umbrella term together. They also use the term LGBTQQIP2SAA <laughs> to recognize who's allowed in this group. I'm going to be... What? What does that even mean? <laughs> Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why they have to keep on adding these letters to to show who they <laughs> represent. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I, you know, back in there, it was just LGBT, you know? And I was like, okay, well, I, I guess. But it's pretty straightforward, I suppose. But then it, it just kept on getting longer and longer. <laughs> that is ridiculous. To be honest with you, fellas, I have zero idea what that collection of letters means past the first Q. What does the other Q stand for? Why is there two A's and the number two? Screw it, I'm going to Google it. What does this even mean? Apparently, it's a combination of terms that collects everyone who is under the queer umbrella into a single group. I just feel like there's a better term out there to quantify this than that word salad, but okay, there we go. We all learned something today, I guess. There's also a neurodivergent group within Ubisoft as well, and I what what in the world is a neurodiversity group? What is that? Like, everybody thinks the same? Is it another echo chamber? Obviously it is. Neurodiverse. I will also want to say that the more I'm shown, the more I'm just kind of face palming. You see, this is what happens when you cater to people like this so willingly. You end up creating liability concerns within your own company by allowing all of these different groups to exist. If yeah. one person from the Bow or Black Ubisoft group gets a microaggression... Uh, let's see, what is that? Is the International ERG dedicated to neurodiversity topics such as autism spectrum disorder okay learning disabilities okay such as dyslexia or dyscalculia <laughs> okay anyways so it's people with with okay adhd attention disorder okay hyper okay whatever okay from the so word we get salad the people then the employee HR heads of these other groups now need to discuss the problem and then come to a resolution. And then what are you supposed to do? Because if you fire the black dev, you're racist. But if you fire the gay dev, you're a bigot. Either way, you're a loser <laughs> when it comes to keeping your job. <laughs> I'm not saying don't allow people to have voices within their workplaces, mm -hmm. but there has to come a point where these things go far beyond the realms of what should be exactly. Acceptable. And you just end up pandering to adult children who will cry and likely file lawsuits against <laughs> yes. you as a company yes. if their demands aren't met all they of the will. time. They will. No wonder nothing gets done at Ubisoft these days, man. Even Tom Henderson confirmed in his report recently that games like Shadows were nowhere near the polished state it needed to be for its original November release. And the demands of these devs were falling on deaf ears at Ubisoft 
who just wanted the devs to keep working and shut up in order to hit that lucrative fall season release, but obviously, as we know now, that's not happening. Tom Henderson also confirmed in his report about this, which by the way, came out after I said what I said in my videos, that Ubisoft is addressing a ton of the historical inaccuracies, which is exactly what I was also told by my sources. Hmm. All of this seems to be hitting a fever pitch, where it's very likely that Ubisoft, if they can't succeed within the next year, will just have to close shop and then fire sale their IPs. I said in a previous video that hmm. Tencent was looking to buy Ubisoft, which I was told by sources with one of the parties circling Ubisoft like sharks due to their, you know, economic situation. Yeah. And now CNBC has read an article recently too, where they also confirm this is well titled, with shares at 10 year lows, Assassin's Creed maker Ubisoft faces questions over its future. In the key points section, they state last week, activist investor AJ Investments said it was working with other Ubisoft shareholders to push the company to sell itself to private equity firms or the Chinese gaming giant Tencent, which already holds a stake in the French game publisher. Yeah. I genuinely think if nothing improves, Ubisoft will indeed have to sell themselves to Tencent, and they could probably take their IPs and likely turn them all into profitable franchises in the future easily. Tencent, of course, they own stuff already like Riot Games, which makes League of Legends and such. And they're pretty much one of the wealthiest companies when it comes to gaming right now. So if anyone can buy them, it's Tencent. Again, they're making Assassin's Creed Jade, the Chinese mobile spin-off game with Ubisoft right now. And like I was told before, Ubisoft is going to go bankrupt unless someone saves them, but that... Yeah, I, I mean, I certainly hope someone does save Ubisoft. Um, I think they're going to go bankrupt. I, I don't think they're going to have any choice. Uh... I mean, they've been run into the ground thus far. So why would things change in the next year? So, yeah, I mean, it would be a real, real shame if 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 they had to, um, you know, totally go out of business. But like he said, they'd probably just sell off their IPs. Um, so th like Assassin's Creed would probably continue. Maybe it's not the same, but at least it continue, but somebody's got to buy them. And that, that's what I'm hoping. I will, of course, leave them in debt to whoever saves them, which could just make more problems for them in the future. And I think the safest bet for them is to just simply admit defeat and sell themselves to Tencent. But I guess we'll see. But like I was saying, this very disgruntled employee that shared those screenshots with me also told me that nothing is getting done at Ubisoft at a reasonable pace anymore. And in my previous video, I spoke on how one source told me that contractors were being brought in to help get these games to a point where they could reasonably ship to release, and that many of these contractors are usually older white men who, as expensive. contractors, are making exponentially more this way than they would if they worked for these companies officially. In yeah. case you don't know, these contractors, they could be used for anything pretty much. They could be contracted to make specific character models, animations, or even levels for a game. Their expertise and efficiency is obviously what these companies are paying for. So pretty much from Ubisoft's case anyways, this has now been confirmed by a couple of my sources and it's honestly kind of sad to see. Because what does that say about your company if the people you've officially hired in-house are inept at making the games that they're being paid to do? And instead you need to constantly outsource yeah. anything that goes beyond the basics to more seasoned devs. And in turn, you're paying a fortune for things that should be made for cheaper by the devs that you've already hired. I heard it would just be so much cheaper just to hire qualified people that can do it in-house, still pay them a great salary, but keep it all in-house. It's, it's just cheaper in the end. Saves the studio a lot of money and the developer or whoever's, you know, I mean the publisher. I heard that this same problem also exists right now at CD Projekt Red but I don't have enough info yet to really comment too much on that story as of yet. I also heard that one of the only remaining actual competent dev studios right now is Rockstar, which is making Grand Theft Auto 6, but I am not 100% sure or not if they too are relying on contractors to pick up the bulk of their workload or not. But again, I'll comment more. Well, I mean, it's normal to use contractors, I mean, for sure, but you don't want to be contracting out the whole entire game. I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, and Rocks, you know, they're probably busy. I mean, they're finishing up Grand Theft Auto 6 now or whatever, but they're probably already have started on, I'm hoping, Red Dead Redemption 3. So, you know, they're going to be busy.
for more on Rockstar and GTA if I ever hear more from that source. But I was told, take it with a grain of salt, but apparently the guy who wrote Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2 and the previous GTA games, which was Dan huh? Hauser, who huh? was one of the previous owners of Rockstar who has now left, huh? he huh? apparently has wrote the story for GTA 6, but again, yeah. grain of salt, I guess we'll see in the future. We also uh, know that Shadows is getting a co-op mode courtesy of Insider Gaming. I was also attacked for apparently not knowing this was happening when why? I reported what I knew. It's almost as if people have different sources that know different things, but it was good to see that Insider Gaming confirming quite a bit of what I already reported on. It was wild that Insider Gaming confirmed that Ubisoft is now bringing on historical experts when it comes to Shadows' authenticity. Which is ridiculous considering they are only doing this now when the game was originally going to release in November 2024. Yeah, which exactly. tells me that what my sources were saying was true, that this game is indeed, as of right now, full of historical inaccuracies. I hope they fix it in the future releases. I mean, we already know that Ubisoft doesn't portray seasons correctly in the game. They even show Yasuke sitting too close to Nobunaga in the opening CGI trailer too. Which also, according to the Japanese community, the flooring and the doors in that scene are also not accurate for that time period either. And the whole Tori Gate debacle as well as Ubisoft getting caught stealing assets from Japanese groups, and even putting paintings that didn't exist until after the game's time period, man, it just keeps going. It's not that surprising, yeah. I reported months ago how Shadows had a consultant on the project who was someone that specialized in bizarre things. Like how old men monks would bed their young male pupils and this consultant whose name is Sachi Schmidt Hori was the person that Ubisoft thought was the best person to bring in for this game, which is big yikes, but all right then. Another I mean, like literally you could like grab any Japanese person and they would have done better. <laughs> it just blows my mind. Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> There's so, so many other choices they could have gone with. Why? I don't know. Anyways. Another YouTuber had more insider info. This comes from Joraptor or Yoraptor. I actually don't know how to say their name. Anyway, they said via Twitter that the extra development time for Shadows will cost Ubisoft around 20 million euros to complete. Apparently, this new version of Shadows intended for February 2025 will have more content and will add a few high-impact secondary quests that will bring more memorable moments to the game. I assume this might be part of what I heard about Yasuke having his role change somewhat. Maybe they're trying to make him more relatable or something. I guess we'll see. They continue saying that the delay should remove the small frictions Ubisoft usually fixes with post-release patches. That no, I'm not saying this. It, I think it would be cool to play as Yasuke. I mean, regardless of whether he was a real samurai or whatever, but I mean... He should definitely be in this type of game. He should definitely be like a tertiary character at best. And maybe you play like one or two missions or something as Yasuke. That's it. That that should be it. And then if he's making an appearance, he's he's just part of this part of the story. Rolling with the crew, you know what I mean? Like um but he should definitely have never ever have been the primary main character of this game. That just means that they will release the game in a more playable state, which has been reported by many that Shadows was too buggy for release as it is right now. And then of course the poor sales for Star Wars Outlaws is apparently another major reason why Shadows is also getting delayed, hmm. which by the way, that was also reported and confirmed saying that Outlaws sold just over 1 million copies since launch, which is abysmal for triple. Uh, yeah, that is beyond abysmal. Ugh, that's just outrageous. Why aren't why aren't people like totally fired? I don't understand. Bully gaming. I did report before that I was told that Ubisoft internally believed that Outlaws would be their Red Dead Redemption moment. And and that just blows my mind too because I mean you had to have seen the state of Outlaws. I mean for you know from at least Alpha. And there, you'd be delusional if you looked at that game in the alpha state and been like, oh, yeah, this is our Red Dead Redemption <laughs> type game. It's, it's set in space. Oh, my gosh. That is just unbelievable. And the game was available on PS5, Xbox and Epic Games Store, and it still only got a million copies. And we also know now that Outlaws will be coming to Steam this holiday season as well which actually breaks Ubisoft's usual release schedule. The reason for this is simple, the game failed horribly and they are in desperate need of sales. 
Maybe it could have used that concept art design that leaked for KVS Ubisoft. You know, the yeah. one where she actually looked like Humberly Gonzalez? That would have been way better. Which means you guys actually flirted that idea, but decided not to do it. But what's done is done, I guess. Jor Your Raptor also stated that Ubisoft has reduced their Q2 financials by around $150 million, which according to him, means that Outlaws sold 2 to 3 million less copies than they expected, which yeah, that makes sense too. I said in a video a while back that Ubisoft's mm. investors planned for 5 million sales of Outlaws by early next year. <laughs> and this doesn't seem to be even close to what they'll no. make on this game. Raptor echoes what I and Insider Gaming said as well, which is that devs demanded a delay so that they could actually finish the game on time, and the game is simply not in a good state right now based wow. on mock reviews and playtests. Raptor later on brings up the pre-order, stating that they are lower than Valhalla, but says that Insider Gaming said that the pre-orders are still solid. Which is definitely not what I heard. I reported based on what I was told that Shadows has about 7% of the pre-orders of Valhalla. Yeah. Of course, I doubt anyone will confirm this at Ubisoft because to admit this would be disastrous for their public image and Shadows oh, yeah. momentum when it releases. If that were to be confirmed, it would cause more people to cancel pre-orders claiming that it's now a dead game. But again, I'm just telling you what I was told. Uh yeah, it's like rats off a uh, burning ship, you know? Like... People aren't going to stick around for that. If they did pre-order, they're going to cancel because they don't want to be a part of that. Just utter train wreck. Other things that the early access period that was tied to more expensive editions of Shadows has been canceled outright. The gold and ultimate editions of Shadows are also being removed. Future pre-orders of Shadows will also get the first expansion for free as sorry, which I mean, that's a good thing at least. And all in all, everything that could have gone badly for Ubisoft has pretty much done just that. Nothing that I'm seeing or hearing is looking good for them at all. Hopefully me sharing those internal group documents proves to some of you at least that I am not just making this information out of thin air. Because if I was lying, I would make up some crazy rumors on purpose and troll. I would say things like Yasuke is getting a sex change or the main villain of the game <laughs> is actually aliens from Mars. But let's be real. How Might could I cooler. even have gotten those design documents if I fabricated them? I would have had to somehow log into ubisoft's internal servers yeah. get past their vpn right and pass myself also as an employee of ubisoft yeah to gain access to that so yeah did i like Not how would likely. i have made that up i don't understand but anyway yeah that's that's what i got for you anyways we'll see where things go in the future i will also likely follow up on more ghost of yote tsushima stuff as well and i also have a source that wants to tell me about dustborn and all the stuff behind that so Hopefully they get back to me, and then I can tell you guys all about that too. But for now, this is enough. Thank you for watching, subscribe, and such. Thanks to my supporters. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon. All right. Well, that was very interesting and enlightening as usual. If you uh, enjoyed my reaction, please uh, like and subscribe. It makes a big difference for the channel, and I do appreciate it. All right. Well, to all those... Uh, still watching <laughs> and that uh, maybe cut out early. Uh, I, uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. All right. See ya. Bye.